Hey everyone, welcome back and thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to be doing a special video that is going to be dedicated to a commission that I just got back that I sent out to the man Hallowax, Hallowax Basement Builds. Uh, many of you know him over on the RPF. And I contacted Hallowax a, a long time ago after I saw some work that he had done on some V2s asking if he was taking commissions. And he was, so I ended up getting on his list. I just got these back today, and I am absolutely speechless after seeing this. This is uh, some fantastic work. Uh, I want to go over this. I want to talk to you guys about the whole process and how it worked out. Uh, but first off, I'm going to just do a little uh, little appetizer here. This is Anakin Starkiller's Yuma, that the uh, the FX run that he did from earlier this year, and. Uh, Hallowax was looking for someone to donate their their Yuma so that he could practice doing some stencils with it since he came up with this whole uh, design. He's got a thread on it over on the RPF. I said, absolutely no problem. So he sent this over to me, which uh, I am very grateful for. And that uh, I sent this over to him, and I'm very grateful that he, uh, he put the stencils on for me. And I'm going to end up trying to paint this this week. It looks fantastic. I didn't even realize how much uh, was chipped off on the Yuma until he he came up with this. So this is actually uh, this is actually pretty cool. Um, also, and I'm pretty sure that Halloax did this. There is a small little indentation, and the lighting on my chandelier might prevent it from being seen. I'm gonna try to get it right there. If you can see that, that little notch right there I do not believe was on this when I sent it to Hallowax I think he put that on there and I'm going to confirm that with him because it's also on the FX emitter plate here again darn chandelier there it is right there uh, I think this is where there was either there, there could have been a, a slotted screw or a set screw that was on the, uh, the, the face or the lip of the emitter here and it, I, I, there's a story right now where there's, I know there's some debates going on, um, whether it was a slotted screw or whether it was a, a set screw and how it might have just been um, like filled in uh, over time. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to kind of follow up in, uh, on the information and seeing what they're saying about that. However, I'm pretty sure that was not on there. So that's just to give you a little preview. That's the kind of guy that Hallowax is. Uh, I didn't even ask for that. Didn't even know about it. And he, he put that on there for me. So this is pretty cool. Happy to get this back. Uh, and then I could start to paint this. Uh, it's going to be a static Yuma for me. So I'm going to put that off to the side. Okay, now, the main reason why we're doing this video today are these two beauties right here. So what we have in front of us, this is a Solos Hold Gen 2 V2. This is an Anakin Starkiller V2. This is from his first FX run in 2018 that he did. Um... I, I I cannot tell you the amount of work and detail that has gone into this, and let me just tell you about my my whole experience uh, with Hallowax. So from the moment he decided to take on the commission, uh, it's it, Hallowax makes a, a very easy process. He uh, he sends you this this order form to kind of tell you exactly what he's going to do. So this way you know what's, what exactly is going to go on with your hilt. And I believe, uh, I don't know how much you can customize this. That you would have to discuss with Hallowax. However, let me just show you. <sighs> okay, when I say order form, <laughs> I should have said three pages worth of information. Because he literally sends you three pages worth, okay? And he's broken it all up into chapters. But literally puts in step by step what he does. There are five chapters that he goes through. It talks about physical damage chemical aging, stenciling, weathering, and the assembly. And each one has numerous bullet points on the things that he does to this hilt to make it as screen accurate as possible from the photos that we have been able to see uh, over the years, especially the last couple of years when some more uh, behind the scenes photos have, have come out, uh, and especially the video with Mark Hamill. Now, I plan on probably keeping these as, uh, as static. Um, at one point I thought about doing electronics in my solos hold, but uh, I've probably changed my mind since. I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. 
but I just want to kind of go over. So uh, when you send these hilts out to start uh, to Hallowax, he lets you know when you get them. He kind of keeps you up to date, telling you that if you you know when you're moving up on the list, when you're getting close, and then finally, when it's your turn. Now, one of the greatest things that I, I liked about Hallowax is the amount of communication he gave once he was working on your hilt. Uh, anybody who's sent out a commission before, uh, I think one of the biggest issues in, in the community is some of the, the the vendors aren't communicating well enough. And understandably, you know, frustration gets builds up. Um, and I can understand it on both sides. You know, someone who's who's doing the commission, you probably have a lot on your plate. Uh, you're trying to get the work done as quickly as possible, and it can be difficult to continuing to answer um, so many customers at the same time. And if you're the customer sending your, you know, your property, your product to the to the vendor to work on, uh, it can be frustrating too, wanting to know like where you're at, how long things are going to take. Uh, but listen, in this business, if you don't know this by now, anything that you want done well and want done right is going to take time. You know, I had to wait a while for these hills to be done, but I knew that they were in good hands. I did not have a similar experience a couple of years ago when I sent my first Anakin Starkiller hilt to uh, Jordan Eugene to have him do all the weathering process. Now, um, you know, that unfortunately did not end well because, of course, it was right around a, a year after I gave him my hilt is, my hilt is when uh, he ended up disappearing and, and uh, running off. And uh, though my hilt and all my vintage parts were never to be seen again, unfortunately. So... I was very hesitant this next time around in going with somebody, but uh, like I said before, the the amount of work that I had started to see from Hallowax come out, I said, uh, you know, I got to contact him and, and see what his deal is, and he had he was fantastic from from start to finish. The through the process, as he's sending me photos of everything and what he's doing with some of the physical damage to the emitter, the changes that he makes at the the rings and at the pommel cubes. Uh, these little details that you probably wouldn't even know about if you just sent him the hilt got it back all weathered up you're going to be like wow that looks fantastic it looks just like the hilt that we see in the pictures and, and on screen but you know he lists out these bullet points to show you how much work that he does and it takes him a long time to do to do a hilt i was just communicating with him before and uh letting him know that i got everything in and, and showed him the pictures uh how great everything looks you know, and he was telling me that, you know, it takes him almost 70 hours. You know, that's that's like two full-time weeks of work. You know, imagine doing that uh, Monday through Friday, working uh, working 35 hours each week, and this is what you complete, okay? Like, that's, it, it's, that's, how much, that's how much detail goes into one of these things. So if you're, if you're waiting for yours, there's a good reason why. Um, I was uh we, we you know, alex and i had some had some fun the last week because he mailed these out last monday with an arrival date of supposed to be thursday and when wednesday came the the uh or no actually when thursday came the delivery time disappeared and there was nothing going on with the tracking and all of a sudden he and i were like okay all right you know give it a day or two we'll see what happens well friday came and went saturday came and went no changes at all. So uh, Halifax and I are going back and forth, starting to sweat a little bit. Sunday comes, and Sunday, like late afternoon, finally, uh, I get a I get a message saying that it's uh, going to arrive Monday. But for a couple of days there, was a little nervous. This time of year, sometimes packages disappear; they get lost because there's so many. Um, and, and both of us were, were tracking the package every second of the way. But uh, I am glad that they're here. And I really want to go over the, the hilts and just show you the, the work that goes into this. Because there are so many people right now that are, are looking to get these hilts done. And there, there are plenty of other vendors out there, I have to say. If you're out in the UK, uh, I know Adam Wells does some very good work. Um, you can clearly see some of his stuff on the uh, Luke uh, Addicts support group page on Facebook. Um, Scott Juarez from uh, Crucible Custom Props. Uh, also, you can see he, he does some great work as well. But for for my money and everything that I'm spending, uh, I am very happy that I went with Hallowax. And you're going about you're about to see why. So on the solos hold, right now what we have on here is we have a vintage D ring, vintage clamp, 
of course, vintage nut there. Uh, Sloth Furnace, the V2 card, the weathered one. And of course, Halox even goes in and weathers this even further. And as you can see, he, he has weathered down the, the V2 lever that's here. This is the Solo Soul. This is the Gen 2 lever. This is their Gen 2 cone knob with uh, some chunky, the chunky knurling that's in here. And this is the replica mystery chunk, which we know that was discovered by uh, Brian Rogers and some others recently. It was from a boot stud that was actually used on set in Empire Strikes Back. There are some behind the scenes photos of a lot of the crew and even I think even Kirshner had, uh, had, was wearing the boots and they had these nice metal studs on the bottom and someone from the prop crew thought it'd be great to just pull one off and slap it on the V2. But this is one of the replica ones. This is a steel one that Solos Hold offers. And I believe everybody now that the vintage ones are, are out and have been discovered are now mimicking, uh, mimicking those. And I'll, I'll show that off in a minute. Uh, the, a nice interesting detail about the D-ring is that this vintage D-ring I grabbed off of a, a graphics case, a, a camera bag, a couple, about two years ago. And this is when like the, the Graflex D-rings were, uh, you know, were a big rage. Everyone was looking for, for vintage D-rings for their, uh, for their A New Hope Graflex. And uh, the one that I bought ended up coming with four. So I sent two to Halowax. I put one on my, my Gen 1 Solos Hole V2. I put one on this one, one on the Anakin Starkiller, and I have another one for a, well, I have another one for a future project. Uh, and the other one, I actually had a fifth one that I purchased separately that uh, got lost with uh, Jordan Eugene. But Halowax saw these when I sent them and, and he knew these were not replicas and I told him they were vintage and he's like, where did you find them? And I told him I got them from an old uh, Graflax bag. He says, these are the exact size that that Roy has his uh, D-ring set and Roy from Wanawaga puts out a very accurate D-ring for the, for the V2. Uh, and you actually... This is it here. This is the this is the the FX pommel for the Solos Hold V2, all weathered up. Okay, uh, again, nice little uh, replica the the replica steel weathered mystery chunk. Um, but this is a real clean D ring that Halowax slapped on there for me. But he said they are the exact size, and he said that that is incredible that I was able to find them because finding vintage D-rings the exact size can be uh, can be a little tricky. So uh, once again, happy that I grabbed that. Now you can look in here. Well, first I'll sort of with the pommel, and you can see all the physical damage that's done in here. Again, this is replicating what is seen on the current V2. There's even a little chip. Where we are we here? This little chip here that's taken out of the pommel. You can see the different, uh, the chemical treatments that are done, the different coloring that's between the booster section, uh, just underneath the, the booster, and then of course the pommel cubes. Uh, and now the Solus Hold had a uh, had a, a three J lock system, using set screws to lock and unlock the the hilt. Look at just the details in the rings and how, I'm trying to see if the camera's gonna focus just a little bit better than that. But this is just really, really well done. Let's see if we can get like real close in here. See all that, all the different marks. Halowax everything, has everything down to a science. Just an amazing job with the, the wind vane. And then of course, all the physical damage that's done to the emitter itself, to the emitter cap, right around the rim here on the lip. You can see some of the, the wonkiness of how it's been all, how it's all bent. And then right up here, of course, is the chip that's taken out on the nipple. So, and so right here is regular, it's a gaffer's tape that's around the neck. And you can see here, there is some movement because this would spin if this gaffer tape was not on there. So that's kind of holding it in place, just like the prop when they were using it. 
So that's my uh, the Solus Hold uh, second generation V2. Now, and then here is the, again, these are the other parts. So Halifax does not do physical damage to the FX Palma with the exception of the chip. And he does do some uh, some markings on on the Palma. So this machine mark, this was not on the stock Solos Hold V2. This was not there. Uh, Halifax puts this on there and gives it that little mark as well, which again is on the prop. This is the uh, emitter cap for the FX. And again, this is not dinged in any way because he feels that if, the, you, if you actually ding this, that you might actually uh, affect the diameter of where the blade goes in and that might actually cause a problem. So he tends to stay away from that, but does put the scorch marks in here. Uh, again, just uh, amazing attention to, to detail. Um, this, something else I wanted to mention on this one. Oh yeah, so and again, so that mark is also here on the now static, uh, the static uh, pommel. Both of these hilts, when they came out, were touted as being in, in incredibly accurate, and they and they are. There there are some things that each one of them you know got right um, in 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 different ways, and the whole hilt itself. Uh, it's not a hundred percent, but they're both very close. And what Halifax goes in and does it, it, he takes the stock hilt that he gets and he makes it even more screen accurate. Okay. That is just an, an incredible level of detail and well worth the money that you're paying for. And if, if you're going to just, you can easily just take it as stock and put the weathering on it. And that's perfectly fine. But I know that there are some enthusiasts out there that want it to be basically the prop that, that Mark Hamill had uh, in, the, in the interview, which is basically what Brandon has from, uh, from the RPF. And to, to get that as close as possible, there had to be a little bit of work, a little bit more milling done around some of these parts. And Halibux does a fantastic job of that. Now for my Anakin Starkiller, this guy is a little bit more special. And the reason why is because this is all vintage. Okay, with the exception of the V2 lever, because we still haven't sourced that yet. We have a vintage D-ring, vintage clamp, of course, the nut as well. The vintage cone knot from the turntable with a nice uh, thin knurling that's in here. It's not the chunky knurling. And this is the vintage boot stud. And I think this is actually kind of perfect. If I can get that right. This is aged perfectly, or whether I should say it's like just naturally, naturally, um, weather at this point in time. Now, one thing that Halifax does go in and do, and you can see it here, is he goes in and he does weather the steel chunk, the mystery chunk. And, you know, we both agreed with uh, the vintage one to kind of just leave it as is. And I'm, I'm pretty happy that we did that because I think it actually looks perfect. There is fishing line in here that's on both hills. Okay. Hold on. Going in mirror image here, mirror reverse. So there's a little bit of a, uh, a line there right under the booster section. And this is basically the fishing line that where I believe Mark Hamill pulls on the hilt when it's on the Emperor's throne chair in that scene. So uh, I think that's awesome that he included that. That's like a little added bonus that, uh, that he does. But the fact that this guy to me is all vintage, I, I absolutely love it. The, the one thing that's a little, that, that I have, might have to fix. So the V2 lever, again, this is from, this is a Solos Hold Gen 2 V lever. You can buy these separate on, uh, on the Solos Hold website, which was, uh, might be a little more accurate than Roy's from Wana Wanga. For the longest time I was using Roy's whenever I had a V2. I have it on my, actually I have it on my Gen 1 V2. Uh, and then Solos Hold came out with theirs and it's just, it's slightly thinner than, uh, than Roy's. But the only thing is, the the threaded pin that's coming out from the from the lever is a little bit smaller and it's uh on both my my the vintage graflex nuts it's uh it doesn't sit in all the way i might need to get like a little loctite um Halifax and i tried some uh some plumber's tape uh didn't seem to hold as much but i'm thinking about using some blue loctite on there and just a little dab of it to try to get it to seal a little bit better so that it gives a really nice hold um, right now it's sitting okay, but I feel like if I like move that lever a little bit or touch it, it might just kind of, it might um, 
it might just threat or just pop open. So I'm gonna just gonna kind of leave that as best I can right now, or just leave that alone. Uh, but again, here I want to kind of go through the hilt. Now the Anakin Star Killer hilt only had one J channel in it. So if I held the hilt from either towards the pommel end or towards the the rings and the in the the grenade section, the this would actually dip down. The other side would slightly tilt because it just it wasn't secured enough. So Halifax goes in and puts in two tiny set screws. Uh, I think he said three millimeter. Two two tiny set screws on either side to lock it in a little bit better into the body. And I it makes a world of a difference. This thing is now nice and solid. The chipping that he find like that he analyzes and gets both on the underside and on the top, I, I think is absolutely amazing. Just an incredible attention to detail. Love this. Let's get that spinning emitter going. Now this here is the Trooper Trent uh, gaffer's tape adapter. So this is making it look as it appear as on the V2 today. Obviously the adhesive after, you know, almost, almost 40 years, uh, the adhesive is basically lost on it. So it's kind of more or less just hanging around the neck. It's no longer tight like it was originally, like we have it on this guy here. So that that's nice and tight uh, gaffer's tape. Um, so now the, the head kind of, the, the emitter spins you know freely at this point in time, but this adapter makes it, holds that gaffer's tape in place uh, perfectly. So that's, I think that's a really cool feature. Obviously these are both Trooper Trent stencils. Uh, again, looking at the front here, the wonkiness of all the dents around the emitter. You can kind of see that there. Uh, the chip that we see right there, the scorch marks here and here. These are, and, and also, so I had a little surprise. So Halloax, the amazing person that he is, ended up putting a small steel rod in through here and to secure it and to give it added weight. And I got to tell you, this thing feels, it, this thing feels like it's fully installed. It, it, it has such a nice weight to it. Uh, I am absolutely thrilled with how this came out. This to me feels like it's coming right off the prop set, right off the, right off the movie set. And I am very happy that he decided to do that. So after waiting uh, as long as I did, I think it was, I went with the right choice. Uh, I've seen a lot of people recently taking their, their bare V2s and finding out who to, who to go to. Uh, I, hands down for me, uh, I would say contact Hollowax over on the RPF. Uh, some really cool things that he ended up sending. Got a nice Hollowax swag shirt. So I got to show that off, right? Uh, I got a second shirt because of course I got, this was from my the Yuma that he ended up doing, so he gave me a nice little hero, which of course I'm going to be wearing this when I debut the uh, the Mom Ultimate Hero run when that comes in in a couple of weeks. And if that wasn't great enough, check this out. I got a nice Halifax hoodie. I'll tell you, money well spent. Gotta love the Star Wars swag. Support the people in the community. Uh, one of the best things that uh, happened with Halloax is I, you know, I think I definitely, I think I, I hoped I gained a friend throughout all this. Um, he and I have had some great conversations about Star Wars, about the V2. The amount that I've uh, learned from him as he's going through this whole process is absolutely amazing. And, you know, has no problem answering questions, doesn't, uh, doesn't shun you away or, or brush you aside. Uh, he's very passionate about the V2 and about learning anything he can and even and letting and giving you some of his knowledge. And I felt that I, you know, I have a, a decent knowledge of some of, of these hilts, the, the Luke Return of the Jedi hilts, but and, and some of the, the, the nice little details about them. But the, the next level that he is at, it, it made me feel so comfortable as I, as I knew he had these and was taking care of them for me. But uh, great guy, honest uh, definitely well worth the the money that I spent on these and I'm just gonna show you why so this was my gen 1 solos hold okay and 
this was the second Hilt I installed. This was the first weathering job I ever did. And we're talking all the way back in, God, end of, end of 2015, beginning of 2016, I think. Uh, complete amateur hour, right? So I've got a little, I got a vintage D-ring on here. I got a vintage clamp and everything else is stock from the, uh, the original V2. I never, I did not upgrade the parts. I kept the cone knob. I kept the little square chunk because no one had any idea what that was. But just, of, of course, listen, I'm not comparing mine to, to hollow axes, but this is the reason why, let me get them a little bit closer. This is the reason why I went with hollow ax. One, the sense was the first time around was time consuming. I had to do it twice, okay? And I did, mine was an okay job for an amateur because that's what I am. I'm, I'm honest with myself. But this to me is like professionally done. Like this is like giving it to the prop guys and they took care of it for you. So if you want an accurate V2, doesn't matter what vendor, actually I think Halloex only does the Solos Hold or the Anakin Starkiller. I don't know if he does the Romans or the KR or Carl's V2. You'd have to contact him uh, with that. I'm not going to speak for him i just know specifically remembering on seeing on his order form that he had these two so if you're looking for other ones you have to contact him on that but uh this was a great experience i'm really happy i did it and halifax i'm coming i'm letting you know now okay get me a spot because i know there's another v2 coming out from the guys that are bringing us the the new mom hero uh brian rogers and uh adam days they're uh, putting out a, a V2. They just put out a little overlay of, uh, of their V2 on the, the Luke Facebook page. All right, for those of you who haven't seen it, go check it out. Go search for it. I'm sure you'll see it. And they're looking to do another fantastic job. Everything that we're seeing so far from the, the new Ultimate, uh, the new Mom Hero that's coming out looks to be great. Looking forward to that. And uh, I'm waiting to see what they do with their V2. So Halifax, I'm telling you now, I'm going to be using you again. So get ready, make a <laughs> make me a spot right now. Um, but guys, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, I can't say enough good things about this. This uh, I'm I'm extremely happy with how these turned out. This turned out much better than I expected, and uh, I think that's that's the best thing that I can say. Uh, you got someone who's honest, who's dependable and trustworthy, and I think those are very important things in our community. Uh, when we're handing over someone uh, our, our our property and our hilts and, and wanting to get them back e exactly as, as we like. And in this case, even better than what we had expected. So uh, I hope that helps you guys. Uh, that's my review for Halifax Basement Builds. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me as always. I will do my best to get back to you. And that's about it. Hope everyone enjoys uh, the rest of their day. Take care.